Okay, welcome to Kojo's Math, and today we're going to be talking about evaluating expressions number one video. Um, you'll notice we're just going to jump into this, and I've identified that evaluate these three expressions. They're called expressions because they don't have an equal sign, because if they had an equal sign they would be equations. But these are expressions because there is no one solution to them. So I'm identifying the two solutions that you have for each one of these expressions. Now it says x is equal to 8 or x is equal to negative 2. One of the things that students get confused about is do I use both of them at the same time? No. You have to simplify each expression twice. One time when x equals 8 and another time when x equals negative 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to show your work. So for this first expression, 5 plus x, you would write that on your paper, and then you would substitute x equals 8, and you would go 5 plus 8, because x equals 8, and, you, and notice how I'm showing my work. I write 5 plus x, and then underneath it I substitute in the 8 for the x, and then I simplify it. 5 plus 8 is 13. Now I'm not done with that problem because x also equals negative 2. They want to know what is 5 plus x when x is 8 and then what is 5 plus x when x is equal to negative 2. So now we have to, we can leave this here at the top and underneath it, right next to it, we would write 5 plus negative 2. Now notice what I did. I put negative 2 in parentheses. And that's good because you have to be careful with the signs when you plug them in. Now, what is 5 plus negative 2? 3. But long as I'm showing my work. So when x is equal to 8, 5 plus x is 13. When x is equal to negative 2, 5 plus x is 3. You have to show the substitution. That counts as a point for that step. You can't just do that in your head. So that takes us to the next one. Now, the, I hope you remember that x, the quantity of x plus 3, what are they doing here? Multiplying. The quantity of x plus 3 times 6. You have to be able to recognize this at this point in the year. So again, we have to do this how many times? Twice. We have to do it so we plug in x equals 8. So we write parentheses 8 plus 3, close parentheses, times 6. Now if it helps you, you can do this. And then we have to do order of operations. Simplify inside the parentheses first. 8 plus 3 is 11, and you can do it like that. So you're showing me the work, just like we've done on the area of a trapezoid. And then 11 times 6 is 66. Now here, that means when x equals 8, the quantity of x plus 3 times 6 the value is 66. So you would box it because we're kind of running out of room and you might be running out of room on your paper. So instead of going next to it, we're going to go underneath it. Because again, we're all organized. I'm going to change the color. I don't need to rewrite this because it's written for me. So now I have to put negative 2 plus 3 times 6. The quantity of negative 2 plus 3 times 6. Well, order of operations tells us to go inside the parentheses. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. We can put it here. And 1 times 6 is 6. Again, I'm going to box my answer so it's very clear. This one is very confusing for students. There's two x's. It says 5x minus 2x. 5x minus 2x. And x is equal to 8 or x is equal to negative 2. That does not mean that you put an 8 for this x and a negative 2 for this x. x can't be more than one value at a time. So we have to say x equals 8. So 5 times 8, because 5x means 5 times x, minus 2 times 8. We use the 8 for the whole thing because they're both x. You can't say 8 and negative 2. So then we say 40 minus 16. And 40 minus 16 then is 
24 and I'm going to box it because again I'm running out of room. Now I need to redo the problem for x is equal to negative 2. Now this time I replace both x's with negative 2. That's my value. I'll get that in a minute. So we have 5 times negative 2 minus 2 times negative 2. Now watch very carefully. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 as you've learned. Then you have minus, you bring this down, and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. What do we have here? Two negative signs. What happens when we have two negative signs? You make it a giant plus. So negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Now, notice how I've got my work organized. Kind of ran out of room here. I could have planned a little better. And if you ran out of room on a test, you could ask for another sheet of paper or take out another sheet of paper and just label everything clearly. But the fact you have to remember is, is that you substitute in two different times for the variable and solve it twice, or simplify it twice, because solve would be equation, these are expressions. And when you have two x's, you don't put both numbers in at once. You put one number in both times, and then you put the other number in both times. And that's going to take us to another set of problems where we have two different letters. A equals 2 and B equals 7. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to do these problems. You don't have to do these problems twice. You only do them once. Remember to substitute in the values for A and B because these are two different variables and then follow the rules of, order, of operations. So pause the video and then we'll come back and we'll do these together. Okay, welcome back. So here, you have to write B minus A. And then you're going to say, well, B is 7 and A is 2. 7 minus 2 is 5. There are no equal signs. No, I'm doing everything vertically. See that? I come over here. What does 3B mean? What operation? Multiplication. So we say 3 times 7 minus 2. Order of operations tells us to say 3 times 7 21 minus 2, which is 19. I'm going to circle these just so I can recognize them. Now here's one, 24a minus 6, divided by, and that's a b. I hope you got that, that that was a b. So this is inside the parentheses, and I'm going to say, okay, notice I'm replacing 24 times 2 minus 6, I have to put my parentheses, divided by 7. You can do this, 24 times 2, 48, minus 6 is 42, just like we did with the area of a trapezoid, and then 42 divided by 7 is 6. This is 5a plus 2b. This is 5 times a plus 2 times b. So 5 times 2, remember I'm plugging it in with parentheses, so I'm showing multiplication, and 2 times 7. Look how I'm showing my work. 10 plus 14, 24. So I have to circle that. Look, it's all vertical. I'm showing every step. A, B. What operation is that? Multiplication. So I have 2 times 7. I have to put a dot there. It's not 27. This does not stand for 27. It stands for 2 times 7 which is 14. This is 4b divided by 2a. 4 times b divided by 2 times a. b is 7, so I'm going to put it with parentheses, divided by 2 times 2. 28 divided by 4 is 7. Yes, I have to show that step. 4 times 7 divided by 2 times 2 is 28 divided by 4. You have to put that step in there. You can't do that in your head. And then the last ones are absolute value. And I want you to try these. I want you to pause the video remembering that this says the absolute value of x. So you plug them. You have to do these problems twice because it tells you x is negative 5 and x is equal to 6. So 
the absolute value of negative 5, you, simplify, you have to evaluate that first, then say minus 4. Just to remind you, what does this mean? 3 times the absolute value of x. So you have to simplify the absolute value of x first, then multiply it by 3, then add 1. Okay, pause the video, do the problems, we'll do them together when you come back. Okay, welcome back. So I have to do these twice. So I'm going to do this one first. I have my information, I have to write that down, and then I put my work underneath it organized in a vertical step way. So x is negative 5, so I say the absolute value of negative 5 minus 4. What's the absolute value of five, negative 5? Five. 5. What is 5 minus 4? 1. Okay, now I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to say the absolute value of 6 minus 4. Well, 6 minus 4, the absolute value of 6 is 6. That answer is 2. So you should have 1 and 2 on your paper. Then we go here. I have 3 times the absolute value of negative 5 because I'm going to put negative 5 in for this x, and that's not a parenthesis. It should be an absolute value sign, plus 1. Now I have to evaluate What's the absolute value of negative 5 first? It's 5. If you do this, then you can do this. But you have, you can say 3 times 5 is 15 plus 1. You can show me that. You don't have to write, you could write 5 plus 1, or you could just show 5 and then go 15 plus 1 is 16. Then I have to do it again for x equals 6. So 3 times the absolute value of 6 plus 1. Okay, you could say, okay, the absolute value of 6 is 6. 3 times 6 is 18 plus 1, and the answer is 19. I'm circling my answers because sometimes you have room side by side and sometimes you don't, but see how it's all organized? Again, now here we go. We have an x here and an x here. We don't put negative 5 in for one and 6 in for the other. You have to put negative 5 into both x's first, and then the next time you do the problem, you have to put 6 in for both of those. So this is the absolute value of 4 plus x minus 2x, which is 2 times x. So the absolute value of 4 plus a negative 5 minus 2 times negative 5. All right, 4 plus negative 5. You simplify inside the absolute value before you take the absolute value. You treat it just like parentheses. 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. So that the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And minus, what is 2 times negative 5? Negative 10. Look at that. See how I brought this minus down? And then I say 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. What do I have here? A double negative, so it becomes 1 plus 10, which is 11. Now, I'm going to do this one up here so you can see it. I would normally go below. You'll have enough room on my test to do that. So now we have the absolute value of 4 plus 6, because we have to plug in the second value of x, minus 2 times 6. This becomes 10, and the absolute value of 10 is 10. That's the easy part. Minus 2 times 6 is 12. And 10, see that? 2 times 6, we brought down the negative. So 10, or the minus sign, 10 minus, and 2 times 6 is 12. So 10 minus 12 is negative 2. And that's our answer. Now this is just evaluating expressions, the first video. So write down two things that you've learned about evaluating expressions, and write one question that you have and bring it to class. And I look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye.